Okay, hello everybody. Thank you, Edward. My name is Pablo, and I'm going to introduce the role of standardization in Tolai display markets. Uh, the purpose of the presentation is to introduce the relation between the standards and Tolai displays, as well as present the situation in the European context and explain measures put in place for ensuring a positive impact in the society. Below, we present the index of the different points that make up the presentation. Uh, firstly, initial considerations such as standards, legislation, and specification. And finally, introducing the product to the market related to Tolai displays. First of all, we define uh, standards. The main definition of a standard is it is made in the regulation of the European Parliament where a standard is a technical specification of repetitive or continuous application, which is not compulsory and established with the participation of all the stakeholders, which approves a body recognized nationally and internationally. As far as, far as that, um, uh, it's hard to say that it's a voluntary document and which is accessible to the public and is prepared with the conscious of all the stakeholders uh, manufacturers, administration, users and consumers, research centers and labs, and schools or universities. Um, the main thing is that this has to be adopted by an agency recognized uh, like UNE, which is a national standardization body. So, focusing in the case of Tolai displays, being an, inno an innovative product in the market without uh, specific standards, the manufacturers could agree to establish requirements to make a differentiation of, the, of their products from the rest of the market, always with the consensus of the rest of the market, which is have to be into account. In addition, you can create uh, other types of documents than the standard, which do not have the same categorization, but whose creation and implementation is faster than a standard such as uh, technical reports, which collect data of a kind different uh, from that normally published as an international standard, or another one like the technical specification, which are often published <clears throat> when the subject under the question is still under development or when insufficient consensus for approval of an international standard is available. Moving to another uh, to another one slide, uh, we have to take into account what when making a standard, this should take into account many considerations and point of view. Uh, we can watch at the image different one like the customers or provide that they are they are one of the of the main uh, public of these services. In this slide. The scale of application of different type of documents is shown. Standard, uh, <clears throat> starting by technical regulation, which is uh, which are technical specification on products, processes, or industrial facilities established with mandatory throughout a provision of the administration for their manufacturing, sale, or use. The other kind of document that we have are standards, which are voluntary but can sometimes be transposed to mandatory application either because they are mentioned in national or European legislation. Um, finally, other documents such as, as we said before, technical specification or technical reports, which uh, both of them can become a standard. Uh, we have to uh, take care that Standards are voluntary, but um, sometimes and in most of the European countries have a strong impact in public pol policies, and they have a, a deep impact, impact in the market and the society. And as we say uh, some slides uh, before, sometimes they are referent in the European and national regulation. Uh, in a standard, we can find different things such as safety requirements or 
quite uh, which is uh, quite uh, useful in the European directives and legislation terms and definitions and uh, another ones like management or test methods legislation and standards um, we have to take into account that the standard is the states because they are formulated by experts and they often are a great use of the state in drawing up the legislation so finally a company involved in the, in the development of a standard will reduce cost and apart and apart from being ahead of their competitors um, as we said standards are made by manufacturers administration users and consumers or universities all of them form what is called a technical committee if we focus on to lay displays we can see different ones such as the TC 110 electronic display device which the scope of this uh, technical committee is the, is the standardization in the field of, uh, of flat panel display devices such as liquid crystal solid states and plasma display devices and another one like the TC 100 audio video and multimedia system and equipment here we saw different standard examples of both technical committees which are highly used in the sector apart from a lot of uh, another one that, that these these different uh, technical committees have introducing the product to to the market related to toilet displays first of all uh, we have to introduce that Europe must ensure that third countries offer adequate levels of openness to European exporters and investors and have basic rules that do, do not undermine our ability to protect our interests and to maintain a high level of protection in health, safety, welfare, social, environment and consumption. Recent reports on imported products don't do, that non, do, don't meet minimum standards and which are the, the detrimental to health have highlighted the absence of effectivity monitoring of markets in the EU. This is another example of how unfair trade practice continue to distort the levels of, com of competitiveness of European enterprises. The strengthening of market surveillance by the market state should involve verifying the quality standards declared by the manufacturers of the of third countries to achieve a fair and rational balance with EU producers and protect consumers from the EU against products of poor quality and unsafe. We have to take into account different concepts. First, laws, which are directly applicable and they don't know they don't need to be transcribed into national law secondly directive which seek to approximate a national legislation but not the unification of community law and they force on their ends not in their means and it's usually addressed to member states and finally decisions which uh, commonly are individual by companies, citizens, and is and are binding in all of these contexts. We are going to define what is a, an European approach, which is a regularity technique whereby legislation affecting a product is restricted to essential requirements to protect public safety and health objectives. So by this way, a product can fulfill with the requirements of a standard to comply with the approach. This will be developed in the next slides. In this uh, slide, uh, there are different approach, uh, different such as uh, the low voltage or, well, we can see a lot of them, but the main one are new approach directives, uh, directive as based on the principle of the new approach and the overall approach but RC market 
and directly based on some of the principles of the new approach and the and the global approach. So, uh, how we can fulfill with the requirement of a directive using standards? Uh, there is a way using harmonized standard. A harmonized standard is an European standard elaborated on the basis of a request from the European Commission to a recognized European standard organization to develop a European standard that provides solution for compliance with legal provision. Such a request provides guidelines which requested the standards must respect to meet the essential requirements or other provision of relevant union, union, European Union uh, harmonization legislation. Uh, finally, uh, compliance with harmonized standards provides a, presu a presumption of conformity with the corresponding requirements of our harmonization legislation. Manufacturers other economic operation or conformity assessment body can use standards to demonstrate that product, service, or processes comply with relevant EU legislation. Also, uh, also using our harmonized standards means the quickest and easiest way to get conformity. So, as an example, finally, if we want to export or light display to all Europe, the product must comply with the requirements of different new approach directives, such as the electromagnetic compat compatibility directive or the restriction of the use of certain hazardous substance directive. For example, to fulfill with the requirements to ensure that the electromagnetic disturbance generated doesn't exceed the level which radio and telecommunication on telecommunication equipment or other equipment cannot operate as intent. Using the standard EN uh, uh, 61000 part 6 part 1, which object is to define the immunity test requirement for displays, will comply with the uh, requirement above. Finally, to comply with the restriction of the use of third times hazardous substance directive, with the use of the harmonized standard EM 581, manufacturers will introduce the product without any problem. So the final conclusion are that the standardization support the market mechanisms, contribute to the reduction of purchasing, production, stock and commercializing cost and contribute to facilitate the technological transfer. So thank you for for your attention and I hope your questions that I will answer uh, immediately.